Hey, and welcome back to this series where we are making tic-tac-toe games with a twist. In the previous episodes we used Java to make tic-tac-toe entirely from scratch and even added some twists to it. But from now on I will use Unity 3D Engine to add some 3D dimension to our tic-tac-toe twist. Apart from the previous episodes, I will now not go through it step by step, but I will guide you through on how I did it. I think this is a great way for you to challenge yourself to try to do it as well, but still having the guidance of having the complex code shown to you. So without further ado, let's get started. I start my tic-tac-toe game by creating a generator for the field. We can do the field by hand, but it's very annoying if you want it to be perfect and it will cost a lot of time if you eventually want to add more rows and even for the third dimension. For this generator, I created a simple plane with a transparent material and created a simple cube with a black material for the borders. For the first iteration of the generator, I decided to create the simple tic-tac-toe field, so no three dimension yet. I decided to create sliders to define the rows and the, and the thickness of the borders, so we can use this data to generate the field. Every time before we're gonna generate, we first gonna clear the transform. For this transform clear, I created a extension method, which will destroy all children of this game object. Then in the generate, I will instantiate the plane, which we will use as the parent for the generation of the borders. For this generation we need the size of our plane. We can get the plane by having the mesh from our mesh filter and get the size from the bounds. Then we will do a for loop for the actual generation which we will start with 1. To define each border I have this short algorithm which I will go through quickly. Imagine our plane having a size of 10 but the pivot is in the middle so the left and right will be minus 5 to 5 total of 10. This means our start is 10 divided by 2 times minus 1 which will be minus 5. And if we then want to have the offset of each positioning, it's going to be our size 10 divided by rows, which is 3. Which in this case equals to 3.333. So the first position is minus 5 plus 3.333. And the second will then be minus 5 plus 6.666 and so on. Then we will use this data to instantiate our border on the x and y axis. But if we're going to try and run this code, we will stumble upon our first problem. Which is, if we're going to change the thickness of our borders. You will notice if you change the thickness, that the spaces on the sides are significantly bigger than the space in the middle. And therefore causing this inconsistency in the spaces between each border. So let's go and change this. Instead of having a start, we will actually have the total size of each space. Which will be the size minus the thickness times the borders. Then the offset will be the total size divided by the rows. And our position will be calculated with the offset and the thickness taken in account. And then again also subtracting the size divided by 2. So we have to pivot in the middle for the uh, minus 5 to 5 again. Let's take this example. We have again a plane with a size of 10. And this time we know that the thickness is going to be 3. The total size will then be 10 minus 3 times 3 minus 1. Which is going to be 4. So our offset is going to be 1, 4 divided by 3 which is 1.333. Then if you check each space, we know it's 1.333 and adding this all up together, we get again to 10. So if we're going to look at our position, we have our offset, which is 1.333 plus 3 because our i is 1. And then we're going to subtract the thickness divided by 2 because the pivot is again in the middle. So it's going to be, uh, so the positioning is going to be the half of it. And then we still need to subtract the uh, size divided by 2 to have the minus 5 to 5 ratio. Now if we're going to test this, you will notice that everything is aligned perfectly with the correct spaces in between, no matter how many rows and how thick we will make the borders. Now we have the calculation right, we can focus on the hitboxes. I created this simple cube with a jelly-like uh, material, and within the code we can almost use the same identical calculation as we done for the borders. But this time we only have to swap the thickness and the offset in the calculation for the positioning, so we get the spaces instead of the thickness. At the end, I add the hitbox to the game manager and I use the X, Y and row, which we will eventually use for the three dimension as the key for each hitbox. So it will also eventually gonna count as the space where the markers will be for the pattern find. And if we then will run this, you will see it will work perfectly fine. Now we can also focus on placing the actual markers. So I created this simple X prefab and I created this O, which is actually just a cylinder. And I recolored them both to differentiate. For the code, I created a simple script, which uses the uh, Unity in-house on mouse over, on mouse exit, and on mouse up as button uh, methods, which you can also read up in the documentation, which I use to enable and disable the render, 
and if the mouse is pressed it will just instantiate a instance of the marker and it will set the type of this uh, hitbox to that marker placed. And now if you're gonna try and run this code you can see we can finally place markers on our field. Now we can finally focus on finding the patterns. For the pattern finding I highly recommend you to watch my previous video where I went in depth on how I did it in Java and the code you will see here is actually basically the same but just now written in C Sharp. In the beginning we will just have the basic pattern finding and later I will show you how to add the 3D dimension to the pattern finding as well. When the pattern is found I want to show a line across all markers which form the pattern. Therefore I use Unity Line Render and created a custom shader in order to have the line always on top of everything else. So now if we will try to use this pattern, you will see if a pattern is found there is always a line visible between all the markers. Now we have the basic tic-tac-toe working, we can finally focus on the 3D generation. I only added an offset, which we can use to offset each plane, which will represent a 3D tic-tac-toe. The only tricky part is that we need to find the new centered index of our plane, so we can adjust our transform position to that. Let me show you an example why we will do this. If we would calculate from 0, 1, 2, you will see if we have the pivot in the middle at 0, we will have the viewport having a lot of blank space on the bottom, and if we add some new rows on the top, they won't be even be visible. So if you're gonna center this, the viewport will be based from the middle, but the offset will still remain the same. For example, in this case, from minus 1.5 to 1.5. But in this case, you will see that everything will fit in the, in the viewport, and if we add new rows, it will adapt to it as well. Now if we run this, we can see a multiple dimension tic-tac-toe game, where you can play on multiple boards in order to, to play with different tactics. But there only rests one problem, and that is really hard to play because we can't really look around the object. So therefore I went to Google, and I basically just googled for Unity camera rotation around object, and I came across this very nice tutorial blog post, which I used to create my own variation of this too. In my variation, I basically just added the clamp values, so you cannot really go full under and uh, go all the way on top, so you don't end in some weird situations where you are upside down and such. And now if you try to play with this new camera rotation, you will notice it's much easier to play and much easier to navigate through the game. Now we basically have the three-dimensional tic-tac-toe game set. I really wanted to add some assets. So I went to itch.io and found this free assets pack. Then I also checked the Unity asset store and found this free skies, which are nice to add some more feeling to the game with having a skybox. To add this skybox, you can go to rendering and lightning and go to environmental and select your skybox you prefer. Then you just need to go to your main camera and just select the skybox. Then now if you play, I already set the markers to the sushi ones and now you can see we have a fun gameplay. Now we have basically everything set for our three-dimensional tic-tac-toe game. We just have to add one small adjustment to our pattern finder. All we need to do is instead of only checking the X and Y, also checking the row. So thereby also adding the direction Z for it. So then we only need to define in our pattern finder to also check the rows in combinations with the X and Y. The pattern finder starts from bottom to top. So here's the first pattern, which is a diagonal line from the lower right to the higher left. Then we have our second, which is just a vertical, vertical line on the Z axis. And then we now have the reverse from the lower right to the higher left. This one is along the Y axis, from the lower right to the higher left. And then also one again on the Y axis from the lower left to the higher right. We then only have our crosses remain. This is our cross from the lower top right corner to the higher bottom left corner. Then we also have a cross from the lower bottom right corner to the higher top left corner. Then we also have one from the bottom left corner to the higher top right corner. And then we have the last one which is from the lower top left corner to the higher bottom right corner. And then to end everything off, I wanted to add an 
and animation. So when the game ends in a win or tie, that there is an animation showing who won and that you can press to restart the game. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. And you can put up the bell notification to get notified for the next videos upcoming from this series. There are also some things I didn't add yet, such as a rule that the first player cannot play at the middle tile, because otherwise the middle player will always be able to win. But there are also more rules which can also make it fun or even make it another twist on this twist. So that's all up to you and I would really like to see it if you made something about it. So really let me know if you created something fun with a tic-tac-toe in three dimensions. I wish you best of luck and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments or just send me a direct message on Instagram. Goodbye and hope to see you in the next video.